Well, this is going to be the biggest weekend of all in the world of horse racing, and it happens right here in Southern California. In fact, they call it the Super Bowl of thoroughbred racing. The Breeders' Cup is back in Santa Anita Park. And this morning, CBS 2's Joy Benedict is live at the track. Joy, the gates are open, the horses are ready for the races. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go, right? Ready, set, go. That's right. We got the starting gates behind me. Now, the first race of the day is supposed to start at 11:15. It's obviously running a few minutes behind schedule, which is pretty typical when you're dealing with horse races. But even though, you know, man can't seem to get things running, these horses are ready to roll. It was an early morning at the Santa Anita racetrack. Dozens of thoroughbreds stretched their legs to an attentive audience, all hoping to pick a winner in this year's Breeders' Cup. We've had a, a great year so far. Local trainer Doug O'Neill wasn't giving up too much. He has seven horses hitting the track this weekend, including Richard's Kid and Handsome Mike, both running in the classic Saturday. I've been blessed to have been to tracks all over the world, and I think it's the premier racing facility. This is the sixth time the Breeders' Cup has visited Santa Anita. It's called the Super Bowl of horse races, 15 races in two days. For the uh, fillies and, and the colts, different distances, um, dirt, turf. And $25.5 million up for grabs. It's technically the richest event in sports. But how do you pick a winner? We have uh, some friends that like to bet the greys and some that um, like to bet on just the names so uh, or numbers. There's also height and personality. Richard's kid was a little shy. Handsome Mike, a little frisky. And this guy, no more, likes to stick his tongue out. Should work at like the post office, you know, stamps, stamp liquor. No more is running in the juvenile race. He actually got his name because of I'll Have Another. The injured winner of this year's Kentucky Derby and Preakness, also trained by O'Neill. During that whole journey, we said that a few times, like, uh, we know a lot more now. Even though no more isn't old enough for the big race, it's still a big day for him. Whoever wins the, the uh, Breeders' Cup Juvenile will be the favorite for the Kentucky Derby next year, instantly. A lot at stake for these thoroughbreds, their owners and trainers like O'Neill, who now will just sit and watch and hope for champions. All right, so the big race today is going to be the Ladies Classic here at the Breeders' Cup. That's taking place at 4.30 this afternoon. And obviously the Breeders' Cup Classic is tomorrow at 5.30. If you want my opinion, I've been with the horses all day. I'm going to go with Handsome Mike just because he and I obviously had a little moment earlier yeah, today. Yeah, I think you had a, a true <laughs> connection there. <laughs> now I know why he got his name. <laughs> Joy exactly. Benedict, live this morning at Santa Anita. Thanks so much. The Lakers' double overtime win Sunday is the talk of the town, but it's the highlight or low light at the end of the first half that has fans speaking out. He was just celebrating. It wasn't, I don't think it was intentional at all. It's the elbow seen around the world, but this blow didn't just hit Thunder guard James Harden. Lakers Nation is also feeling the pain as a suspension from the league is likely. We in for the first round, you know, for sure. Definitely worried about it. The play came just before halftime when Meta World Peace made a dunk to bring the Lakers within one. He was celebrating by beating his chest when James Harden bumped into him. Meta threw his left elbow into the side of Harden's head. He just gets real riled up and, and he had that nice dunk, so... I don't think he like, meant to do it, like, but that's kind of been his problem the whole time he's been in the league. You know? But this was no flop. Harden was hit so hard he suffered a concussion. It's not clear if the injury came from the elbow or his head hitting the hardwood, but either way, his condition and ability to play is unknown. But Sunday's elbow looked less like Meta World Peace and more like the athlete formerly known as Ron Artest. He holds the longest suspension in NBA history, 86 games for this basketball brawl at the Palace in Auburn Hills, which spilled into the stands. Artest didn't take questions from the media Sunday, but says his foul wasn't intentional. I got real emotional, real excited, and uh, it was unfortunate that James, you know, had to get hit, you know, with an unintentional elbow. The Thunder, they're playing for a championship this year, you know, so I really hope that he's okay, and I'm, you know, I apologize to the Thunder, you know, and to James Harden. And fans are sticking by him and his passion for the game. Oh, that's the fire that wins championships. Assuming the purple and gold can get past the first round, for this foul may just have ended world peace. First round, they'll be knocked out. 
Meta World Peace hit Twitter last night after the game, tweeting this. I just watched the replay again. Ooh, my celebration of the dunk really was too much. Didn't even see James. OMG, looks bad. And yes, it does look bad, but one of the factors that the NBA is considering as far as how long Meta World Peace will be suspended is actually the condition of James Harden. And we're still waiting to see if he's going to miss any games, and that'll obviously determine just how many games Ron Artest misses. From El Segundo, Joy Benedict, KCAL 9 News. In high definition, this is CBS 2 News at 4.30 a.m. Let's run some numbers past here. First, it's 4.43, and then these. Five years, four teams, five coaches. The Lakers' new point guard, Ramon Sessions. No overnight sensation in the NBA, but he certainly is a sensation in Laker purple and gold. Yeah, and now, if fans could only get his name right, including myself, <laughs> our Joy Benedict introduces us to LA's new star in the making. And again, Ramon Sessions. It's a name resonating on the court as the Lakers' newest point man is shining in LA. And although his threes scream showtime, Lakers win! Fans can't always remember his name. I hear everything Ramon, Ramon, Raymond, everything except the right thing. So, for the record, it's Ramon, Ramon. My dad's name is Raymond, so they cut it short. And just called me Roman. We caught up with the Lakers' newest guard at York Elementary School in Hawthorne, where he helped children learn about healthy eating. An uncle to two girls and father to a dog named Sesh, Roman Sessions is all about family. In fact, it was his mother and older sister who first put a ball in his hands. She used to beat me till I was probably about 14 or 15 years old, so she was pretty good. But as confident as this young man is on the court and in front of a crowd, he has one big or little fear. I never swallowed a pill. Ever in my life. He choked on a piece of candy as a child and has sworn off all medication. You ask the trainer, uh, Gary, he'll let you know. He, he don't even look at me when he, when he passed the medicine around because he know I'm not taking it. And although he clearly scores points with kids, Sessions' journey in the NBA is anything but storied. This is my fifth year. This is my fourth team. This is my fifth coach. Ramon's rough road started in high school in South Carolina when the basketball powerhouses passed. My test scores came back late. A lot of schools wanted me to uh, go to prep school, which I didn't really want to do. In fact, he'd been out of high school for months before he got the call. I signed with Nevada um, August 1st and reported August 18th. Three years later, he took a chance on the NBA. I went in the draft and was drafted 56, so, you know, it was one of those things where I definitely second-guessed myself after it was done. Milwaukee picked Sessions at the end of the second round. He spent most of his first season in Tulsa with the D-League. Then came a new coach, a pass in free agency, and he landed in Minnesota in 2009, then was traded to Cleveland 10 months later. It was one of those things that's been tough, but it's just something that you just got to roll with the punches and, you know, you had to keep working hard. But in Cleveland, his highlights faded again. The Cavs won the lottery selecting a point guard. I wasn't one of those guys that, you know, was on the best AAU team, went to the best university or the big time school, or was drafted real high. So Ramon Sessions wasn't really surprised when he learned he'd be traded once again in March until he learned what team wanted him, that he'd be heading here to the Staples Center to play for the Los Angeles Lakers. Sessions gets inside. Now I'm a starting point guard in the NBA at five years for one of the best, if not the best organization in the league. A starter for the first time. And after his career that almost wasn't, it's a thought that makes this Southern gentleman giddy. Because if you listen to that story, you're like, huh? There's something don't sound right, but it's one of those things. One of those things that prove you don't have to be seven feet tall or a first round pick to make a difference on the court. I think if you work hard, anything can happen. His best advice, regardless of your career, when your opportunity comes, take the shot, because that is what makes your name unforgettable. Ramon streaking out of the backcourt, goes all the way and rides it up and in. Joy Benedict, CBS 2 News. Great story. It's a great story. Yeah, yeah. everybody likes that comeback kid, and it uh, seems uh, like he's done a lot. Especially when you think about, you know, I'm being mm -hmm. traded again, 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 and again. to the Lakers. Oh. <laughs> Suddenly it gets right. a little better. All of a sudden, yeah. Fantastic. Well, the last day of a very busy weekend at Staples Center with both hockey and basketball scheduled at the arena again in a single day and a cycling race today that ended in the area, too. CBS's Joy Benedict is live at Staples Center tonight with more on the excitement both on and off the floor. Joy?
That's right. It certainly has been an exciting day down here on LA Live. We are live inside Staples Center with really the hardest working team, sports team in the world, and that's the employees here at Staples Center. Take a look. It's been a, just about two hours right now, and you can see they are still cleaning, they are still sweeping, they are still making these baskets work in what is now going to be the sixth playoff game this weekend. The cheers started early at LA Live. <laughs> As thousands of cycling enthusiasts showed up to cheer on the champions at the Amgen Tour of California. <laughs> Moments later, yards away, the puck dropped on game four of the Western Conference Finals. The Kings hit the ice inside Staples Center, and this was just the beginning. I love the atmosphere. There's more people, so it makes it better out here. Danny Acosta and his friends heeded the warnings and came downtown early for the race. We drove and parked like 10 blocks away and then rode our bikes here. Staples set up free valet for cyclists. And inside, hockey fans like Tara and Carrie listened as well, showing up at the arena three hours before the Kings game happily. We've been waiting our whole lives for this. The Kings are going to go all the way to the end. The arena opened its doors early, Good. handing out free coffee and donuts. About 6,000 grabbed the incentives to avoid a mad rush at noon when the bike race ended. The general public, they listened. They heard our message. They came early. Now fast forward about three hours. 19,000 Kings fans storm out of Staples and an army of two 2,000 employees transform a million square foot building, ice to hardwood. But it's not just the floor crew working overtime. Steve has worked merchandising for 30 years. He's changed this kiosk six times in the last 80 hours. It's insane. We got all three teams in the playoffs. We're doing great. We love it. Kings to Clippers one more time. Upstairs, 168 suites are emptied, cleaned, and restocked as time winds down to tip off. Everybody's been working the last 80 hours. This has been a phenomenal run. A phenomenal run by these workers who finished a sports first. Six playoff games in four days in one arena, but regardless of the score, Staples Center and its employees clearly the champions this weekend, and these employees say they hope to do it again next week, because that means LA's teams are still winning. All right, back out here live at Staples Center, inside Staples Center, about two and a half hours, less than two and a half hours from tip off between the Clippers and the San Antonio Spurs game four. And usually at about this time, you would see a couple of players out here practicing, warming up, shooting some baskets. Not happening tonight because they're still trying to get the baskets together. So it just shows you how all of this is sort of impending these upcoming games. But nonetheless, tip off is still scheduled for 7 30. And coming up in sports, we'll have highlights from that Kings game. Reporting live from inside Staples Center, Joy Benedict, CBS 2 News.